welcome uh, in a special way uh, Professor Homan Chitonge, who will be uh, giving us a presentation on uh, on uh, uh, this um, for this uh, third uh, uh, webinar. Uh, professor Homan Chitonge is a professor at the Center of for African Studies and Research Associate at Prism School of Economics, University of Cape Town. He is a visiting research fellow in the Global Justice Program, Yale University, and a visiting professor at the African Studies Center, Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. His research interests include agrarian political economy and alternative strategies for economic growth in Africa. His most recent book include uh, the Oxford Handbook on, of Zambia, of Zambia Economy, published by the Oxford University Press in 2024, Industrial Policy and the Transformation of the Colonial Economy in Africa, The Zambian Experience, uh, Rutledge uh, 2021, Industrializing Africa, Unlocking the Economic Potential of the Continent, Peter Lang 2019. So Professor Chitonga, thank you so much for agreeing to share your experience and your expertise with us uh, with regards to this climate change and uh, and uh, financing. I hope uh, you will inspire discussions. And uh, may I remind everybody that uh, as he speaks, as he does his presentation, and if you have any questions, please uh, post your questions on the chat box, and then he will respond to the questions after he, had, uh, he has done his presentation. Professor Chitonge, over to you, and thank you so much for being with us uh, this evening. Thank you very much, uh, Father Rampe, for the invitation and for the opportunity to speak on this very important topic. Um, I, I, I have some slides that I want to speak through, but I'm getting the thing. Oh, sure. Now it's, uh, it should be ready for me to share. Share, share the screen, yes. Yeah, OK. Okay, is, uh, are you able to see the screen? Yeah, you can do a slide a presentation uh, mode. We can see it now. Wonderful, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, um, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to speak today about uh, uh, financing the green transition, focusing on Africa. And I want to focus more on the climate justice dimensions, uh, the questions about you know, how do we, um, um, well, the justice issues that arise out of uh, the, the, the green transition. Uh, and my presentation has three components. The first one I'll present, uh, I'll speak about the overview of the green transition, what, what that, that means and what it entails. And then uh, the second part, I'll speak about the financing structure for the green transition. And then the last part, I will then uh, uh, speak to the justice questions uh, that come with that. And the starting point, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in this discussion is um, the fact that uh, at the moment, uh, globally, I think we, we are at a very critical time where we need to move away from um, the use of these um, fossil fuels that cause pollution to more, um, uh, uh, more sustainable uh, renew renewable sources of energy that reduce uh, the emissions. Uh, um, and, 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 and within the, uh, this, we, 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 we note very well that, uh, that migrating from a high, greenhouse gas emission trajectory to a lower greenhouse or, or, or to net zero uh, that costs money. And uh, in the just transition uh, debates, uh, the key issue is that that cost should be shared fairly and equitably. Uh, and, 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 and that's a key message that if, 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 if the cost of tran you know, transiting or transitioning from uh, a clean, from uh, from from um, uh, uh, you know high gas uh, uh, you know greenhouse gas uh, emissions 
to a lower carbon uh, footprint uh, trajectory if it's not uh, shared equitably and fairly, uh, then that would not constitute a, a just transition. Um, um, the, the, the principle that guides this uh, 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 just uh, green transition or, you know, is, is was, it was actually elaborated by the United Nations uh, Framework Covenant on, on Climate Change, which spoke about uh, a just transition as a transition that is underpinned by common, common and underlined but differentiated responsibilities. Yeah. So uh, it, it's not that everybody, it, of course, the challenges we face are common to all of us in the sense that the planet on which we live is just one. It's, it's, it's a single unit. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a closed system. So what other people do in other parts of the world has effect on uh, those of us uh, on the continent. So that is where we come in as a common, but a common responsibility. But that responsibility has to be differentiated according to respective capabilities. And I'll speak a little bit about, about that. Um, um, and then within this principle of, of a common but differentiated responsibility, there's idea that the big uh, polluters or the big emitters of uh, 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 the gases that contribute to global warming and climate change should actually bear the burden. Uh, and the question we want to ask today is, do they bear a proportional burden? Uh, and and, and, and I'll, 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 I'd like to... Um, uh, I'll come to that uh, a little later in the presentation. Um, within the just a green transition as well, we have to think about justice at uh, many levels, but most importantly, justice at the global level. So the geographical or spatial justice um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, where we live, but also there's national uh, 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 justice, but also justice at the community level. Um, and most of the people, uh, you know, I'll show later that most of the people get impacted by this uh, uh, crisis. Uh, actually, people contribute very little to it at at the continent or at uh, you know at the national level, but also um, uh, at more community level. So we have to think of it at that at those levels. Um, um, so, uh, in, in, in other words, uh, a just and equitable transition should actually think about workers who are affected by the transition, but also communities that are affected by transition. Usually we think of it as just, you know, the country moving from coal to greener, uh, to cleaner energy. But we never think about, you know, the people affected by the process of moving from coal to uh, wind or solar, for instance. They also benefit, but they're affected. For instance, workers that are retrenched when a coal mine closes. Uh, that's an example of, 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 of being just to all. Um, and in this, I think the key thing is to ensure that all and underlined all should be protected against the risks, but also they should all benefit from the opportunities that come from there. Um, so in, 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 in terms of the green uh, transition, the major components actually are divided into four major components that, that, that we need to uh, uh, think about. So there's energy supply, in, in, in this case, electricity. Um, and, 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 and of course, the transition here is to move from uh, um, energy that is heavy on um, uh, the use of fossils. Um, production of uh, electricity, for instance, coal and, and natural gas and other um, um, carbon-based uh, uh, sources of fuel. Um, there's the second is industry. Um, the, the the production of goods and services in any economy uses a lot of um, uh, resources, but also emits a lot of um, unwanted uh, particles and. Um, and gases as well. So that's a that's a that's a second component of what we need to 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 look at in 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 terms of a green transition. The third aspect is transport, transportation, uh, whether by you know air, by um, road, and and so on, uh, is also a big emitter of those uh, unwanted gases. And the fourth component is of course buildings. The, the buildings. Uh, themselves, in, in, including the material or the process of building, but also um, um, 
the efficient, the efficient use of um, uh, energy in those homes contribute to uh, this uh, emissions. And so in a, in, a, in a transition, we have to uh, think about how to make those uh, buildings both commercial um, um, and, and, and domestic uh, um, uh, less, uh, more efficient. Um, as I said at the beginning, the transition from a green, from a brown to a green trajectory uh, costs money. Uh, um, and uh, that money uh, is what we refer to as the financing of this uh, green transition. Uh, and uh, uh, one of perhaps the most important document here is the Paris Agreement, which was COP15. Um, uh, which which called for a global financing model that aligns, uh, uh, you know, with a decarbonized uh, transition. Uh, what that means is that the financing should should go investment, including investments that should go more into activities that uh, uh, follow a more decarbonized um, um, uh, activities and and less and reduce uh, money flowing into uh, carbon uh, heavy activities. Um, uh, again, the, the UN uh, uh, framework covenant on climate change, um, uh, you know, urged all the participating countries to ensure that finance flows should be consistent with the, uh, a low carbon and the climate resilient development path. Uh, and this is not just in energy, but other development um, um, undertakings that should follow that path. Um, but what we have noticed, and uh, particularly in the case of the, the, the continent, is that uh, the financing uh, uh, models at the moment actually remain very uh, prohibitive and very difficult to, 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 for, for developing countries. And costs, uh, capital costs and financing costs are very high, as we we'll see uh, just now in the case of the African continent. Uh. Um, so overall, what we can say in terms of the uh, financing the green transition, uh, that the current international capital markets are not actually climate smart aligned, um, partly because uh, for most of the, the investors, this is their main purpose is to make money. And so there is very uh, little concern about what the investment does in the long run, as long as somebody makes money, as long as the bottom line. Uh, is uh, looking healthy, but there, are, there is a cost to that uh, uh, in the long run. So one of the key instruments that is used actually for uh, financing green transition is what we call green finance and green bonds. Of course, green finance is more general, but green bond is more specific as I'll uh, show a little bit. So what is this uh, green uh, uh, bonds? What are green bonds? Green bonds are like any other conventional uh, uh, financing instrument. Uh, that are issued by the issuer. Um, an issuer could be a bank, it could be a sovereign, could be a local municipality, could be uh, um, a financial, a non-financial corporation, could be a multilateral uh, development bank, as uh, in, in the case of the African Development Bank, which is one of the, the biggest issuer of green bonds on the continent. Uh, and so when they, when they issue a bond, it's a security, um, uh, and then they call out for investors to invest in the second step. The investors put in money and then the um, um, and then the bank or the whoever the issuer is um, uh, would then uh, use that to finance um, uh, some of the green um, um, uh, bo I mean the the, 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 the renewable um, energy projects for instance and other activities that 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 are uh, including green infrastructure and so on and so forth. Um, and so uh, they will lend that money to companies, to uh, municipalities, to countries as well. Uh, and when the countries or companies or municipalities get that money, then they'll spend it on green projects, for instance, installing solar plants, wind farms, and so on and so forth. Um, but then the sixth, uh, the, the end product of that, and this is what... Um, I was speaking to about for private investors who actually, you know, contribute money and buy uh, 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 the bonds. Uh, at the end, at the maturity of that bond, like any other security instrument, 
uh, uh, they will have to get the money back and get get it with profit. So, so the green financing, um, um, you know, green bonds are more like any other bonds, especially for private investors, um, that they seek to make money out of uh, their investments. Um, usually, green bonds are classified as um, in three, uh, four uh, categories. They're, you know, um, based on uh, what the use of the proceeds of that bond is. For instance, we have the highest quality of what what qualifies as a, the, the highest um, rank of, of, of green bonds are those bonds that are used for activities that are fully aligned with the green transition. That's the first one. The, the second one, they're fully aligned with the green transition, it meets all the um, it covers all the the, the the emission targets, but also that it meets all the criteria for uh, a transition. The strong uh, alignment it meets some of the criteria and is in the process of meeting all the other targets. The aligning it it it, it meets the, the the emission criteria, but it is uh, it and it has a plan to uh, 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 meet um, the other uh, green transition criteria. There's also within green finance what we call not aligned. So there are green bonds, for instance, that are um, uh, issued, but its use uh, follows something else. For instance, somebody issues a green bond and there's subscription from the investors, but then the money is used to, to finance debt servicing instead of investing in green transition. That is an example of a non-aligned aligned um, uh, uh, bond instrument. Um, so uh, they're, you know, unlike conventional securities or bonds, a green uh, bond in general uh, should only be issued to fund environmental projects. So that's a major difference. If, I, if, if, if the government issues, you know, a, a, you know, a treasury bill or, 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 or for, 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 for any uh, project, uh, they can find that money anyhow, but if they issue a green bond, or, you know, the, the 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 purpose of that should only the, of that proceed should only go into financing uh, green projects, and and that's a difference. Yeah, but there are challenges with uh, the green bond um, um, uh, instruments. One of the biggest challenge, particularly for the African continent, is that you can so countries or companies or banks can issue a first bond, but to go back and issue a second bond they have to prove that they have performed well in the, in the way they have used the proceeds. And, but most importantly, they have to have the right credit rating, which in most case, cases has to be a, a triple A uh, rated. And as we see uh, on the continent, that has been very difficult because there's no country that meets that criteria. And this is why most of the countries actually would go through concessional um, 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 financing. Uh, that comes uh, from multilateral financial and development institutions. Um, we also notice that uh, one of the challenges is that many of the, there are some of the um, um, finances raised, they are misaligned with green transition. Like for instance, uh, um, you know, money that is uh, raised through green bonds and then it goes into financing debt servicing or using uh, financing the development of uh, a new coal plant, for instance, that is completely, completely opposite of what it should be doing. Yeah. Um, and the other challenge we have at the moment is that uh, the 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 rating uh, criteria or the rating standards for these bonds is not yet fine because it's a new market. Actually, with the first uh, green bond issued by the World Bank in two thousand and eight. Um, and on the African continent by the African Development Bank in 2012. So this is a, a, an unfolding area and the, uh, the credit rating uh, hasn't actually, they're using uh, the rating um, criteria of the conventional bonds, but uh, uh, there is an argument that um, they, we, we, we need actually to develop better rating that align with, with, um, uh, with the objective of green uh, finance. Um, the other uh, 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 challenge is that uh, most of the, the, the green bonds actually will not provide the liquidity that some of the uh, governments or the institutions will need, partly because its financing instrument uh, only becomes available when the project is uh, 
uh, are ready for investment. Um, in terms of the global uh, uh, green um, uh, uh, bonds, we see that there is actually an uptick has been growing, although um, uh, below what the Paris Agreement uh, had expected. And uh, the green bonds also could be uh, classified in different ways. They're green that uh, involved particularly that, that, that are direct in investment in infrastructure that promote green uh, transition. There are social aspects or social dimension to that. In, for, for, for instance, they are taking care of uh, the victims of flood as part of that um, 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 uh, mitigation of, of the impact of, the, of, of climate change. There's also sustainability, which is also linked to infrastructure in most of the cases. Um, um, and so far, what we have seen is that uh, um, there is an actually lopsided attention in the global financing structure uh, in the sense that although the African continent has the largest source of um, uh, uh, raw materials that are needed for the green transition, particularly, for instance, in uh, renewable energy, you have 80% of platinum, 50% of cobalt, manganese, graphite, and lithium, which are needed here. The continent receives, as we'll see just in a moment, that receives very little green uh, financing at the global level. And this raises a question about, you know, how are we, you know, uh, you know, uh, using the, how are we using the resources of the of the planet uh, to enhance this? Because if more resources are on the continent and they are not being developed, then uh, it, it there's there's a sign there that we are not actually using them in, in the most optimal and appropriate way. Uh, for instance, you know, there are studies that have shown that 60% of the best solar resources globally are on the African continent, yet the continent only received 1% of installed solar PV capacity. That's, uh, again, a misuse of um, uh, the capacity for us to, to be able to transition to more um, greener energy. Um, although the you know the the, the continent has an estimated uh, forty percent of renew, renewable en energies, its uh, uh, a share in the funding that for this green transition has been very low, as we'll see in, just now. Um, and this is actually twenty twenty three figures on uh, the issuance of uh, green bonds. Um, and you can see there that globally, the African continent only got 1% of that uh, uh, green bond issuance. And it's more developed countries like Europe and Asia and, um, and, and, and North America that account for a big. And this is, uh, I think, the discrepancy. Africa, you know, given its uh, um, tremendous amount of resource that are needed for renewable energy, we should see more investment actually coming in there. Uh, uh, to 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 support the transition. Um, so estimates again uh, show that Africa needs about thirty to fifty, depending on 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 what assumptions are made in the estimates, uh, thirty billion per year up to twenty thirty to meet its green uh, um, uh, transition targets. But uh, as we'll see just now, the continent only gets ten percent of that, so it's way way underfunded, and that's a major major problem uh, at the moment. Um, right. One of the things that uh, uh, um, I mentioned earlier a little bit is that uh, the green uh, bond has to meet certain criteria. To, sorry, any uh, uh, instrument, financing instrument, has to meet a, you know certain specific criteria to be able to qualify as a green uh, finance or green bond instrument. Um, and 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 here just to mention uh, four of them that the money raised as, as I said must be used to fund green initiative that's the first one and the method used to pro for project evaluation so the, the project has to be evaluated uh, whoever has issued that there have to be stringent measures to evaluate the project to make sure that it aligns with the green transition um, and there's also um, uh, the the the, the requirement that the proceeds of this um, uh, financing um, um, should be actually be used in a transparent way, transparent way that can show that it was uh, used for its intended purposes. 
Um, and uh, of course, the, the issuer should be able to update uh, uh, their use of that, of, of, of the, re the, the resources. Um, just a, a quick example of some of the uh, green energy bond projects that you know, one can use to raise uh, money to finance, for instance, uh, so renewable sustainable energy, wind, solar, um, and so on as some of the examples. The clean, trans clean transportation is another example. Sustainable water management as well, uh, uh, what we call the blue level uh, bonds are also part of the green uh, bond project. Energy efficient systems, sustainable waste management, particularly the ones that reduce the emission of uh, methane gas, which is also a big uh, contribution to those uh, to global warming. Sustainable land use is an example of that. Um, biodiversity conservation is also another example. Um, examples of uh, so the green bond projects can be uh, classified as mitigating projects or adaptation projects. And here we have some of the examples of mitigating uh, projects and adaptation projects. I won't go so much into the details of those. Um, for the African continent, um, uh, and this is the uh, 11 um, African um, issuers uh, of green bonds uh, in 2023. Um, and we can see here that um, um, uh, the big, uh, of course, the big uh, issue is the African Development Bank. And then we have several other, um, uh, usually actually private companies like for, for South Africa, the first RAND uh, uh, bank uh, issued uh, two uh, green bonds in uh, 2023 uh, and that uh, uh, had a value of $184 million. Um, then we have in Egypt, uh, some in Cape Verde, Kenya, um, um, Egypt again, Ghana and Zambia. Uh, what's interesting here is to look at the total amount of the bond issuance value, which came to 1.96, about 2, 2 billion. Um, and if we go back a little bit, what I was saying earlier, that the continent to meet its green transition targets needs about 30 to 50 billion per year. So the two billion that was raised in 2023 is way way small in terms of what uh, uh, can uh, what we need to to transition. Um, the cumulative again on the on the right side top there the cumulative um, uh, value of uh, green finance or so green bonds on the continent is also very low although we are seeing an uptick of that moving upwards but it remains way way below what we need to to meet our targets. Um, just an example of, um, uh, you know, this is not a green um, uh, bond as it was issued. This is a grant. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are from uh, South Africa, I think you, uh, you might have been aware of the, the debates around the $8.5 billion grant that was given to South Africa by the European Union, Germany, France, UK, and, um, and, uh, and the Netherlands. Um, so the eight, and, but here I just want to show that uh, the uh, plan, the, the money uh, hasn't come actually, the $8.5 billion, uh, only a small portion has come, but uh, a lot of it doesn't come. But the, the plan is to use it for these uh, on, on, on your left side. Priority areas include electricity infrastructure, and here it would be uh, 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 mainly to move into renewable energy sources, including wind and so on. Uh, but there's a big chunk also going into hydrogen, um, um, green hydrogen development. As you know, South Africa has a huge uh, resource of, for, for developing green, uh, green hydrogen. There's just transition in Mpumalanga and that deals with the social component of dealing with the aftermath of decommissioning some of the coal uh, plants. There's municipalities also are given money because they're at the forefront of, 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 of service delivery. And then the new uh, electric vehicles um, also has received part of that. There's also skills development. Skills development is the social component of what I was speaking earlier, because the coal miners, if you stop the coal mining, the coal miners will lose jobs. And if they were trained to work in the coal miner, they have to be retrained so that they can go uh, into other um, 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 activities. So this is an example of how uh, a green uh, financing just uh, transition can be used. But the most important po point, which has actually drawn a lot of criticism uh, from many people, is uh, on, on the left side here that um, um, 
uh, um, pie chart there that uh, uh, 76 percent, almost two, uh, three quarters of the money that came in has actually gone back <laughs> to to the funders. And in this particular case, the, uh, 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 this refers particularly to the Germans, uh, German funding that are, you know, is taken up again by German companies that are developing green finance. The, we can see there that only a quarter of that uh, funding uh, uh, has gone to the local uh, uh, um, companies, uh, which is a problem again. It raises the problem. If you are giving this, and this money, by the way, it's not um, a grant. Uh, uh, as 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 uh, there's a component of an, an recoverable grant, but much of it is grants. It's it's a, it's a, it's a blended finance that includes even uh, loans at uh, concessional rate, and some of them at market value rate. So the country has to pay back, and so the use of this uh, needs to be scrutinized by the public. Yeah. Um, one of the things uh, that for in terms of the green finance for the continent, uh, uh, the key uh, issue that we need to note is that the African financing um, um, capacity at the moment is way beyond uh, uh, what the, the African uh, countries can borrow. And this is one of the reasons why uh, the financing has been low. Um, and the funding, um, as I said again, to the African climate adaptation remains below what is needed, as, as shown a little earlier. Um, but making uh, this financing, green financing or green bonds uh, available to the continent to the levels that would actually uh, help us meet the, 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 uh, the, the, the targets would only happen if they are concessional uh, funding uh, from uh, multilateral development institutions and including regional development banks and bilateral institutions. Through the, uh, the you know, uh, uh, bond uh, market or the conventional capital markets, it will be very difficult for the continent to raise that for the reason that I'll mention a little bit later. Um, one of the reasons is, is, is of course, that uh, the borrowing cost for the continent, as we know, is that uh, 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 June 2023, uh, uh, nine, uh, 12 African countries were in distress and uh, another 12 were in, uh, uh, in, uh, at risk of falling into debt distress. In other words, they were so much uh, um, under pressure from debt servicing and other debt obligations that borrowing, uh, would, borrowing through the markets would, would not uh, uh, make it uh, a reasonable thing. One of the reasons for this is uh, the, that the African uh, borrowers actually, uh, including some of the um, uh, public institutions that use government rating, um, uh, they're borrowing the sovereign uh, credit rating because that's what affects everybody <laughs> in a particular country uh, uh, when investors are looking at that. Sovereign credit rating for most African countries are low. As I um, as, 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 as mentioned, that uh, for green financing, because of its new and uh, uh, lack of um, um, proper uh, credit rating mechanisms, it, it, they only lend out uh, you know, to institutions with a triple A uh, credit rating. And on the continent, actually only two countries, uh, um, Mauritius and Botswana as of, of last year had any invest, had uh, a rating of investment grade. Most of the, or the rest of the countries were non-investing, uh, uh, an investable grade. Uh, and that in itself means that if you were to borrow, you would borrow at a higher, on the, on the capital markets, you borrow, borrow at a higher um, interest rate. Um, uh, the United Nations Secretary General last year, actually, we knew about this anyway, but he, he made it uh, more uh, sort of popular to when he argued that uh, actually African countries borrow four times higher than the interest rate that the United States pay in capital markets, and even eight times higher than what the German uh, government would pay for their uh, uh, credit. Uh, and, th and that makes it just very difficult. And these are countries that are actually very much in need of that capital, and yet they pay four times, eight times uh, to for, for their loans. Um, um, the International Energy Agency, in specific with specific, specific reference to energy projects, also has reported that African countries pay, you know, uh, two to three times higher 
than advanced economies in terms of uh, green energy finance. Um, there's also a challenge for the continent in the sense that most private investors are still very risk averse and would want only to invest in green projects in their own countries and very reluctant to invest on the continent. And this uh, produced, uh, has, has led to many, uh, to, to the problems of uh, insufficient funding for green finance. Um, um, so, but then the justice question that I want to raise here is uh, revolves around uh, the fact that the African continent, uh, and this was um, actually highlighted by the African leaders uh, last year when they came up with what we what they called the Nairobi Declaration, uh, and there they argued actually that Africa is warming. They first of all affirmed that Africa is warming faster than the rest of the world, yet the African continent contributes very little, and we'll see just now, uh, to uh, this uh, global warming. So there, they, there we have uh, then a problem that, um, uh, and, and, and yet remains the most uh, uh, vulnerable uh, and, and bears the, the, the biggest burden in proportion of, uh, 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 of, of, of the difficulties that the continent goes, goes through. Uh, so we have, a, we have therefore a justice question there that the, the people who contribute very little actually are made to bear the burden much more. Um, and, and, and that is an example of, 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 of an unjust uh, system in terms of this. And, and bear the burden at different levels, including the finance, which we're speaking about today. Because if Africa is to transition and reduce it, it has to find the money. And yet, you know, as we have seen, the money of the continent is made to pay four, eight times uh, what others are paying. That in itself is an unjust uh, situation. Um, um, the poor, and then we, you know, if we move to within nations again, it's the poorer people who actually perhaps don't own even a car, they don't own any, you know, fan, they don't use fans in homes or refrigerators, who are affected when there is drought, when there is flooding, when there are, there are storms and so on. Um, um, we we've seen this again. That is a that's a justice question that the people who actually contribute little, even at the community within the country, but at the community level, uh, suffer the most. There's also a future generation component of this justice that if we pollute the environment, we continue to pollute the environment at the rate that we are going and global warming, we are effectively asking uh, the future generations who are not here today, who will be born in, you know, in future to bear the burden of, you know, more floods, more uh, droughts, and so on and so forth. And that in itself is a question of justice. Um, um, there is also um, uh, the idea that, um, uh, that African countries um, need to, um, uh, so the African countries are being asked to spend, you know, up to five times more uh, on um, adapting to climate crisis than uh, than they spend on healthcare, much more uh, than what uh, the healthier, oh, sorry, the richer countries uh, spend. Um, just in terms of the uh, uh, the African contribution, you can see here on the on the on the left side there that uh, the contribution to global warming in terms of emissions, 2021. You can see uh, uh, the African uh, African contribution is very little, and if we move to the right side graph there we can see contributes uh, less than even 1 billion tons, just less than half of a billion ton, uh, compared to countries, uh, continents like Asia, North America, huge contributors. And in terms of per capita, uh, where our contribution is way, way below, even if you take into account uh, the population size. Um, the, <clears throat> the principle we follow then uh, that is needed to be followed here is the principle of um, uh, the, the, the the equity principle, um, which um, um, uh, argues that uh, that the responsibility has to uh, be proportional to capacity, uh, and the the, the the picture there um, gives us a sense. So it's, it's 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 to to have a just transition, we don't have to treat everybody equal because we are not equal. Uh, as you can see there, if you treat everybody equal, some people won't even watch the cricket match. 
you can see a little. But in 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 equality, we actually are in. We are asked to provide more uh, uh, favor to those uh, who are unable or, or, or who are behind, so that we can they can also be part of the uh, uh, of the game. And you can see there that the the the, the shorter, younger person is given more uh, height, uh, so that uh, you equalize and uh, and make them. Uh, watch that. Uh, that's a principle of of, of of equity. It also applies to the principle that uh, the UN, UN uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change argued for, that we have a common but differentiated responsibility towards climate change. What that means in effect is that there are people that have more resources and can contribute more to a greener transition, and they should bear more burden rather than treating everybody the same as if we have the same capacity. Uh, and at the more uh, smaller levels, the, the poorest and the most vulnerable should be supported in a just transition. They shouldn't be abandoned to say, you know, they should, you know, take care of themselves. For instance, those who suffer from floods, because the, as we said earlier, that the, the floods are, you know, occur as a result of, you know, activities that have been done by other people um, in different parts of the world, in fact. Uh, and so those people should contribute to supporting um, uh, the poorest people that we have in the communities. Uh, and the measures also adopted should not make uh, the, the, the poorest and the most vulnerable worse off. For instance, by uh, everybody with money, they transition into greener energy by putting uh, 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 solar energy, and then you, uh, you know, we ignore the poorest who have no resources for that. So, just transition should take those into account. Um, the um, just, this is just showing a little bit of uh, 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 some of those areas where the African continent is uh, the burden. And it, you know, on 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 the left uh, uh, side here, we have some uh, documentation of some of those climate change related uh, incidences and the impact they have. And on the right side there, you have the impact of, um, uh, so they're showing 2030, the impact of um, uh, climate change related effects on uh, uh, GDP per capita. And you can see there that uh, although it differs by region, but the impact could be very high by 2050 there for, for, for regions like East Africa and, uh, and followed by West Africa that you would have up to 15% uh, decline in uh, GDP per capita um, uh, if if there's nothing that is done to uh, uh, meet the targets to the set. Um, so in 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 conclusion, I think that um, we uh, that the global uh, community has an opportunity to contribute to equality and shared prosperity by engaging in uh, green transition, which would modernize the infrastructure. Uh, at the moment, we have not seen much of that being implemented. The African um, resources that uh, the African resources that are rich in new renewable uh, uh, resources should actually also be part of this and receive more attention in terms of how you develop that and uh, make green energy more available. Um, and supporting the African um, renewable energy uh, projects would uh, be. Uh, also contributing to reducing poverty, particularly energy poverty. And uh, the green transition should actually do more to uh, bring, to support those uh, efforts. Um, there should be more funds mobilized, as I said, to decarbonize the transport industry, electricity, and also the building uh, so that we have more efficient uh, and uh, uh, more resilient uh, systems uh, or trajectories. Um, and for this to happen, we need to transform the global financial system to make it more efficient, more equitable, and climate uh, change aligned. At the moment, as we said, there's no alignment. Uh, in some cases, there's, for, the, for the African continent, there's been a proposal to create the, African, uh, the Africa Green um, uh, Bank, which can provide the needed funding to support the green transition. Um, there's also... Um, uh, a call for uh, creating a global climate uh, finance charter uh, to push for stronger global um, uh, commitment to the process of accelerating 
uh, uh, the phasing out of uh, inefficient fossil fuels. Um, um, and, and, and it's also important to note that the green, um, sorry, the G20 countries going to account for 75% of green greenhouse uh, gas emissions, uh, but yet they contribute less uh, to uh, the, 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 the proportional burden they bear in terms of climate finance is much uh, um, is lower than what we find in other countries. And for this, I think, uh, let me end there. Maybe we should uh, then have some conversation on some of the issues raised. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Chitonga. Uh, like any other injustice, this uh, financing the green transition in Africa, it looks like it's complicated. So there are questions on the chat box for you. Uh, I will read them out. The first one, maybe you can stop uh, sharing, please. Um, okay. When we go through the questions. The, the, the first one is from Malon, and it says, as a, means of, uh, as a means to mitigate the challenge of low sovereign credit ratings, are triple P's an option to improve the growth rate of new green projects in Africa? And then the second question from Patrick Kelly, what is your view on ESG investments as a source of, of financing? And then uh, the third one from Terence Krimer. Given South Africa's relatively small contribution globally to both the, sto the stock and even the ongoing flow of carbon, carbon emissions, why is it in our interest and also just to transition away from the coal, from coal? So those are the three questions we have at the moment. Um, so the first one is on sovereign credit ratings and yes. triple P's. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um... The so uh, there's been a lot of debate on the continent about um, the uh, biasness of the the credit rating globally uh, that they are um, biased against African um, uh, assets and and uh, 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 even if they are sovereign uh, assets uh, and there's been some suggestion that. Um, um, you know, particularly the former Senegalese president when he was chair of the African Union was pushing the idea of um, creating our own sovereign credit rating. Yeah. And uh, so that uh, we, 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 we probably have a better way of rating, you know, these investment uh, uh, assets. Um, so the problem with that is that, um, uh, you know, you, you could have your own uh, credit rating system, but if you have no uh, capital, uh, the, you know, that doesn't work very well because you still have to, you still have to approach, uh, you know, you still have to use their system to be able to access their capital. Um, and in, in, in the case of the triple P, I actually also follows the same way that if you, if it's a if it's a self generated if it's, if it's outside of the conventional credit rating agencies, uh, which in you know uh, globally they they are only three and all based in advanced countries, uh, it makes it very difficult for any system uh, unless you, pro you 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 provide your own capital that you 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 then lend out or or or, or, or disperse based on your own credit rating. As long as we are going to go to uh, international uh, uh, capital markets, we will be forced to be rated through the conventional credit rating, and and, and that doesn't help us. Um, um, the the uh, second question was on the e ESG. What is your view? ESG, ESG yeah. investments. Yes. Yeah. So ESG investments. Um, um, uh, I, I, what what I, I I didn't get the part of the question. What was the what is your view on it? Just asking for your view. Oh, okay. Yes. No. So the the the, the my view is that uh, ESG investments um, uh, can be part of the as long as they are implemented in a in an environmentally uh, sustainable way, uh, and they 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 contribute to green transition. So. Um, 
they, they, of course, the, the, the bigger part there is the assessment of uh, their environmental sustainability component, um, 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 which, you know, if there is more stringent, uh, rigorous screening and assessment of that, uh, because what happens in most cases is that people only label those, but, you know, is there a stringent process to streamline to make sure that those investments actually fall or align with those? I think that's that's a bigger uh, issue. And the third question uh, about was that about the uh, yeah, trans transition from coal uh, or from away from coal, given yeah. that we don't we not we are not uh, the worst culprits as it were. What is yeah. the interest? What is our interest? Yeah. So there are two things there. The interest is, of course, um, that um, uh, we, you know, at, on, at, at a moral level, that we are not uh, contributing to any emissions. Um, uh, that, 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 that in itself is a, an incentive for us to be able to, uh, um, to, to not, not to contribute to or to, or to increase um, greenhouse uh, gas emissions. And so the transition then can be justified on those grounds. Um, but uh, there are people are arguing that uh, because our carbon footprint on the continent is small, uh, that we should be allowed actually to use this because some of these uh, cheaper sources of energy, that we should be allowed to use this, and, and, uh, but then incrementally begin to reduce their use until we get to a point where uh, we are able to completely uh, come out. So there are two arguments there, but the the, the incentive is, I think, it's a, it's more of a moral argument that even if our carbon footprint is small, we shouldn't actually be contributing to uh, 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 emissions. That we should actually be moving away from those uh, emissions. The second uh, aspect to this is um, related to the fact that. Uh, we are connected to the global, particularly in, in terms of economic um, interactions. And now with the implementation of these, uh, particularly the EU has implemented the, you know, um, the carbon border adjustment mechanism. And what the carbon border just adjustment mechanism does is that it will punish us if we are still producing, uh, using energy that is coming from uh, heavy carbon emitters. Um, so the, the, the carbon uh, CBM, uh, CBAM mechanism is, 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 is effectively a, an export tariff on goods coming from countries which are producing on, a, you know, on, on a, using a, a high carbon emissions. So, so the fact that we export to other countries and if other countries follow, we could say, look, uh, we, we don't have to export to the EU. But the EU is, a big, is one of the biggest markets. And so if they implement that, then our export will be at a disadvantage. And it's not just uh, agricultural produce, but the entire you know, uh, uh, um, uh, export uh, basket would be subjected to that and we would be at a disadvantage. Right. Then there's one more question. Uh, what can we do as individuals, uh, if anything, uh, that would make the biggest economic impact towards the just transition? Um, I think as individuals, we can do a lot more things. Um, as first of all, uh, we also have to use um, energy in ways that is sustainable. Uh, and, 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 and there I'm not saying, you know, we immediately transition or go into solar because different people have different capacity to be able to that. But from even as individuals, uh, uh, we know that by switching off the lights, you know, helps us to reduce because the lights are consuming energy and that energy is produced from coal. So the less we use, even at an individual, it might appear like it's small. Like for instance, in an office, you know, I've, I've seen people in an office on, on a Friday, they leave the office on and, you know, the lights, so, sorry, the lights on until Monday. Uh, and the amount of energy used just by that, you know, uh, uh, contributes to uh, 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 that. And if, if we can change that, then, we uh, we can contribute to reducing um, um, uh, greenhouse. Um, at a more um, uh, you know for things like uh, uh, investments as well for those who make investments, we can make a personal decision that I'm not going to make an investment in anything that goes in um, um, 
uh, uh, and, and, and clean energy or anything that is not promoting a green transition. That is a decision that one can make. We can also, at the, at the individual level, we can support the initiatives, whether by government or by civil society organization, uh, like uh, uh, the discussion today, where we also uh, support the campaign to uh, uh, ensure that the resources that are coming for green transition are used for the purpose that are meant for. We support uh, uh, the processes that, uh, we support um, uh, any projects that, uh, that um, uh, promote uh, a green transition, whether by the government or, or, or any. And those are individual decisions that we can do. Uh, whether you support NGO, that uh, Friends of the Earth, or whatever the, the case might be, that raise cause uh, 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 for concern. We can also be involved in campaigns to uh, force the uh, richer nations to be able to uh, become, to, to practice uh, the principles of justice that they've signed for. Uh, in terms of equality and 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 financing of the green transition, those are those can be done at an individual level. Great, thank you. Just one more question from me now, uh, just to fill in the three minutes that's left. You you mentioned uh, seventy six percent of the green bond going back to where it came from. Effectively, you know, I mean that's another injustice which is uh, prevalent in 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 this. Uh, uh, financing uh, system. It sounds like a grim picture that you've painted on the whole in your presentation. And is there any hope of uh, mitigating or changing the, the, the situation? Because I mean, even Pope Francis in Laurato C, you know, uh, nine years ago, he laments the injustices that is prevalent in this. And it seems as if now, when we talk of this green transition, it's always, the West or those who have money who gain at the end of the day. And so is there any hope is, or what should be done to change the system? Is it possible to change the system? Yes, uh, I think hope is always there. Hope is what sustains us. <laughs> without, without hope, uh, we wouldn't be waking up and, 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 <laughs> e and even speaking because <laughs> the, we, we speak to, you know, with understanding expectation that the, we, we hope this will have uh, 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 some effect. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the the case for South Africa actually is, is a telling, and this is why I brought it in. And it's raised a lot of criticism from people who have actually been monitoring this. Uh, it's something that has gone off the media. We had a lot of media hype around it in, in 2022 when, when, the, when the grant was announced and we, there was high expectation that it's going to work. But then what we discovered was that uh, the, the people who provided the finance actually sent the experts to go and work on hydrogen. The, 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 you know, the, the, the case that uh, we, we, we followed more is the hydrogen, green hydrogen development. So what has happened there is that the German uh, firms or companies that have the technology to develop the green hydrogen uh, are the ones that actually have been subcontracted and, and, and given uh, the responsibility. The argument that they are making is that they are developing this within the country, but ultimately they have come to take the money <laughs> that uh, that uh, and it and it's not money that is given as aid. This is money that we have to pay back. Um, uh, as, as I was saying, it's 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 a loan. Uh, if, it, you know, effectively, although it might have uh, low interest rates uh, compared to market rate. Um, uh, it, but ultimately, we have to pay back. So the way we use it uh, uh, has to be determined by us. So it's, it, we can't let them begin, come and determine how we use it. Uh, that's one thing. On how we can change this, I think uh, one way to change this is to have uh, um, to monitor government uh, activity around this. Because uh, one would I would would argue that uh, the government is in charge. Yes, but in charge. Uh, you know, in, in whose interest is what we should ask. And that calls for transparency because um, if we were transparent about this, we could have actually questioned why is it that you are giving uh, uh, um, um, this uh, project to? There are some companies within the continent, within South Africa that can actually also 
uh, in, uh, develop the, 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 the green you know, hydrogen projects. But why is it that we are still sending the money back? It's the same if you go to Namibia, it's the same if you go to Morocco, because those are the big three green hydrogen uh, countries on the continent. And we are seeing the same German companies that are actually coming. Uh, and even if they provided some finance there, yeah. but for me there, the big issue is how do we, this is, the, the German companies did not take the money on their own. They had to agree with the government. So it's we have to hold our government to task and say, let's see what why is it uh, 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 why is this being done? Um, so far, uh, you know, very few people have actually asked that question in, in the South African government. Uh, we have seen some academic papers that have been written, but it hasn't filtered to the to the to the people on the ground so that they can say, why why why, why are we doing this? And we need an explanation. Why is it that the money that comes in has been taken back again by the same companies that <laughs> from the country where it came from. But but this is a general story of uh, Africa's aid. It has always been like that, that for every rand that is that comes in, 60% goes back. Um, we have very little money that uh, gets to do any work uh, on the continent. Perhaps that's why we find development very difficult. Maybe to end on that note and uh, the note of why are we not asking our governments to act for the common good, to act for the uh, benefit of their people. We'll end on that note. Why are we not asking our governments to act on our uh, benefit? Thank you so much, Professor Chitonge, for that uh, uh, presentation and the discussion. And we thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. And uh, we hope to see you again next week uh, when we we have our third, our fourth, sorry, our fourth webinar on this season of creation 2024. Thank you so much. God bless and have a good evening. Many Thank thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.